Are you looking for a tutorial on how to create awesome thumbnails for YouTube? But the problem is every single video you find is showing you how to do it with Photoshop and you don't have a license for Photoshop. If so, this video is for you because we're going to be showing you how to do it without even installing a program on your computer. So let's go ahead and roll that intro. What is going on guys? Chad here from How2 Tech, the channel dedicated to helping you take your tech to the next level. And in this video, we are going to be showing you guys how to make awesome thumbnails without even installing a program on your computer. And we can say bye bye to Photoshop because this program is honestly pretty awesome. So let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so before we go ahead and jump into this, I do want to state that this is not an advertisement for Photopea and I have not been paid any money. I just really like this website and I use it from time to time. So you can see here, this is a website, photopea.com. I will keep this window full screened pretty much from now on. So F11 to full screen that on most of your computers. I do not know if this works on cell phones or maybe even tablets, but there is a very big possibility it does since it runs in a browser. So there is a positive there. With that being said, also want to state that this is not some masterclass for Photoshop or even for Photopea. Just going to show you some basics on how to make pretty decent thumbnails in a fairly easy amount of time without you having to, you know, watch 50 minutes, 50 plus minutes of tutorials. This is going to be a very simple video to get you started. So with that being said, now let's go ahead and get into this. All right. So starting first, we want to click create a new project. And in the new project tab, it's going to pull something up like this. And you can see it's asking you what you want to do to create this new project. So we want to select from these templates and we're going to go to screen and we can see that these are the, you know, the different formats that we've seen over the years for TVs and displays and stuff like that. For YouTube, we want to create our thumbnails in full HD, which is 1920 by 1080. So we'll click that and it will set a width of 1920, 1080 with 72 DPI and we want to make sure the background is select, uh, selected as white, and then we'll click create. Once our document is created, we want to go ahead and create a different background layer. To do that, we're gonna click layer, new fill layer, and then go to gradient fill. This is going to add a gradient as the background layer. Now, we want to go ahead and update this because we don't like this plain Jane background gradient. It's just kind of simple, and we wanna change it to something a little bit different that kind of fits what we wanna do. If you want to, you can click this downwards arrow and select something through here. But for what we're going for in this video, these aren't really going to work. So we're going to have to create our own. To create our own gradient, we're going to click on this current gradient that we see down here, right here in this menu. It's going to open up the gradient editor. So we're going to create our own. Now, these bottom sliders here are what dictate how our gradient looks. So we need to update these colors to match what we want. We're going to be going for a blue and um, Kind of more of a light blue that kind of changes just a little bit so that's why we want a gradient so it's just not a static color so we're going to click this box here and then click here to add a custom color and then we're going to change this to somewhere kind of right around in here and then we see that this circle is actually all the way down here this dictates the color so i'm going to move that all the way up and then i'm going to adjust through here and kind of find a darker light blue and then we're gonna get a lighter light blue right here. So we'll select this one now, click this box, and then we're gonna kind of go this direction with it. And we can see there's definitely a little bit of change there. And then okay, and then okay. And we can see now our gradient kind of goes from a darker light blue to almost just a regular blue to a very light blue. And we can adjust the angle at what this happens at. We can reverse this so they're kind of flipped. We can change the scale and a bunch of other stuff, but that's not really pertinent in this video. So since we're done with that, we're gonna click here where it says Pro, this stands for Properties, and that's gonna make that menu go away. The next thing we wanna do is add some text. So we're gonna press T on our keyboard or click the T here on the toolbar, and this is going to now kind of turn this into the text tool. So what we need to do is click and drag, and this is going to give us a text box, and inside of this, we can start adding text. So we're gonna make this say easy custom thumbnails, but we're gonna do them one line at a time because we wanna add special effects to each of them. So we're gonna type in easy, and you can see here, I've got a font called Proxima Nova. You might not have this font just because it's not standard in here, but you can actually load in your own fonts, and I'll show you how to do that right now. So what you wanna do if you wanna add your own font in is click this downwards arrow, and then I'm gonna back this out, and you can see there are tons in here. So you can definitely look through here and you might find something you like, but maybe find something on the internet and you're like, I have to use this other font. So to do that, you'd click load font and then just find the font on your computer. 
double click it and it will add it in. So say we wanted to do Proxima Nova Thin, double click it, it says Proxima Nova Thin loaded in, and then we can select this and then we can go back through and then you would go down the list, find your font. And since mine has different weights and stuff, you can see now we have Proxima Nova Thin. But for the sake of this video, I actually want to use black because it looks really good in thumbnails because it stands out and it's very bold. So I've got that added in. If you guys want to add in your own fonts, pretty awesome thing to do right there. Uh, now that I've got it added in, I need to change the size of it. So I want to make it bigger. So I select all of it by double clicking and then click where it says size and then just drag to the right to make bigger or drag to the left to make smaller. So we're going to bring it up to probably right around here. I think that looks pretty good. So easy. Maybe right around here. Okay, and click the checkbox. And we want to go ahead and, you know, make two more layers. So we want one that says custom and then one that says thumbnails. So I'm gonna click this tool right here, the move tool. Make sure easy is selected. You can see there's a box around it. If you don't see a box around it, make sure transform controls is selected right here, that checkbox. And then we are going to press control J on our keyboard or right click the easy layer over here. And then we're going to click duplicate layer. This is gonna make us a copy of it essentially. So we got easy and then easy copy. Our move tool is selected. We can still see what's selected right here. So we're going to click and then drag it down. And now that we've got it moved down a little bit, we want to change this to custom. So we need to open the type tool back up by pressing T on our keyboard or clicking on T on the toolbar. And then we're going to double click on top of the text to select everything. And then we're going to size that in just a second. But First, we want to change this to custom so we know what size we want to make it. So I want to make this say custom and then I want it to say custom, but I want it to fit from where the E starts and the Y ends. So I'm going to double click again inside of here. Sometimes you have to like triple click to get this to work. Uh, one, two. Yeah, there we go. Double click and then we're going to size this down. So I'm going to click here on the size and then drag this down to the left. And I'm going to just kind of eyeball it for the sake of this tutorial. You can. There's more advanced tips on how to uh, be very, very precise, but we're not really covering that today. So we're just going to drag this down a little bit, find what looks good. I think that looks pretty good and then click the checkbox. Next, we need to add thumbnails as well, and this is going to be the same same theory. So we're just going to right click duplicate layer and then we're going to click the move tool. We're going to drag this down and then press T on our keyboard or click the T here then double click custom and then we're going to change this to thumbnails. So we want to do the same thing. We want thumbnails to fit from the C here to the M. So we're going to double click everything inside here or you could just click and highlight everything, whichever works for you. And then click on uh, size and then move that slider to the left and kind of fit this right there. That looks pretty good. And then click the checkbox. The next thing we want to do is get the spacing down of the text here. So we're going to click the move tool again and then we're going to select like thumbnails and we're going to drag it down just a little bit. Click uh, custom. So select it over here on the layers section and then move our move tool. Make sure our move tool is still selected and move that down a little bit. Kind of figure out the spacing of what looks good. So I'm thinking kind of like somewhere right around there. And then we're going to grab easy as well. Kind of move it. And we're just going to kind of make it look like it all goes together. And if it doesn't look like it's taken up enough room, that's something we can address in just a second, actually. So. We're going to do that. And then now we're going to update the color scheme of them. So to do that, we're going to do them. Uh, we're going to do one of them first, and then we're going to apply a layer style to everything. And then we're going to update colors individually for them. So for easy, we're going to double click on this and then we're going to do a color overlay. And then we're going to change this color overlay, depending on what it is to white for easy, because we want this, the main draw of attention and white is something that draws, you know, attention fairly easily. As far as colors and design, we're going to add a drop shadow. The drop shadow I'm currently using is 70% opacity, um, zero distance, 43 spread, 29 size. You can adjust this, you know, the more you adjust the spread, the different it looks and stuff like that. So, you know, adjust that to whatever you think looks good. And then whenever you're done, you click OK. Um, actually, let me click double click and then drop shadow, add that back and then color overlay because I didn't click OK, I clicked the X. <laughs> So click OK there. And then that's essentially what we've done. We've added a color overlay to the text and then we added a drop shadow behind it. And what we're going to do is copy that drop shadow and color overlay from easy to custom and thumbnails. So we're going to right click and then we're going to click layer style copy. And then we're going to select custom, press control and then press thumbnails. 
So we've got both custom and thumbnail selected. You can uh, tell by that box there. And then we're gonna right click one of them and then we're gonna go to layer style and then paste. And you can see it applies that to both those layers, which is super neat because it saves you a bunch of time. So you don't have to go in there and you know fine tune every single one of them. Next, we're going to change where it says custom and thumbnails. We're gonna change the color overlay for both of those because we want those to look a little different. So for custom, we're actually gonna go for a light blue color. So double click on it, we'll click color overlay, click here, and then we're gonna change this color to a light blue. So kind of right around there, that looks actually perfect. So we'll click okay. Okay, and then we're gonna change thumbnails to a yellow. So double click on thumbnails. Make sure you don't click on the text, but you actually click over to the side or right there. And then we're gonna change this to a yellow. So we're gonna go kind of right around there and then drag up to the top corner and then click okay and then okay. And that is honestly looking really, really good so far. The last two things we wanna do is add an image in and then we also want to figure out how to export this and actually a third thing to resize before we do that. So let's go ahead and get our image. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and add an image in and for this, we're just gonna go get a picture of Photoshop off the internet. So the best place to go is Google Images, that is images.google.com, or you can just go to Google and type in Google Images or just search for images of stuff that you want on Google, very easy. Um, so for this, we're going to type in Photoshop logo PNG, if I can type in logo right, PNG. And the reason why we're typing in logo is because logo, uh, or PNG, I apologize. The reason why we're typing in PNG is because PNGs are photo files that have an option for the background to be transparent. So we're gonna do that and then search. And then we can see we are greeted with a bunch of different search results. This is actually what I used for this video. So we're gonna go with this. So I like that one. You can see, typically if you see like a checkerboard thing in the background, that normally means it could be a transparent file. So we're gonna click that and then click on this and it should send us to a website. So we can see here on this website, we get the option to download. So we're gonna click download. And then they're going to make us jump through hoops and crap to get there. And then we're gonna click here. And then this should give us a download after we wait these obnoxious 10 seconds now. All right, so after you've downloaded your image to add it in here, we're going to go to file and then open in place. And then we're gonna find our image and then we're gonna double click on it and it's going to drop it right into our picture here. So the reason that we search for PNG is you can see that this image is actually from this corner to this corner. And if it didn't have a transparent background, this background layer here would be some color and you wouldn't be able to see through it. So that is the reason why we went with this. So that's just kind of a little back story, I guess, or some extra info of why we did what we did. So. Maybe that's interesting to you, maybe it's not, it's fine. So we're going to scale this up. So we're gonna click the corner. And to do that, we need to make sure that we actually have this move tool selected. So don't wanna kind of rush this here. So we're gonna click that corner. And then to keep the pr uh, proportions of it so it doesn't get all stretched up and tall or stretched and wide and stuff like that, you hold shift while you're scaling this up. So we're gonna scale this up to somewhere right around here. And we're gonna kind of just go maybe right around here. So we'll move that and that looks pretty good. And then we're gonna click this check mark and that looks pretty good. But I don't want this stuff over top of the text. So to do that, I'm going to click this image layer and you can see by clicking this eye here, it kind of disappears once we click that. So what we're gonna do is since we know that's now our image layer, is we're going to click on it and drag it down below all the text, but where it's above this gradient. Because if we moved it below the gradient, then we can't see it anymore. So we want it right there. And that is honestly looking really, really good. And I honestly think the spacing and size of our text is pretty much spot on. So we might actually move them just a hair. So we're gonna grab easy. So we're gonna click on it, make sure the move tool is selected. I'm gonna use the arrows on my keyboard to kind of move these up just a little bit. And then I'm going to click on thumbnails and I'm gonna move it down just a hair. So there's just a little bit more space there. And I think the last thing we're going to do to the image before we go ahead and export it is add a little bit of glow or a drop shadow or something to this image. So we're going to double click on this image of Photoshop over here in the layers tab. And then we're going to add an outer glow. So we're gonna check that and then we're going to adjust this color to whatever we think would work. So we're actually gonna go for a yellow. So we're gonna click yellow, okay. And then what we need to do is we need to up 
the spread and the size and kind of adjust this until we get something that we think looks pretty reasonable for what we're going for. So I think somewhere kind of right around there's pretty good. Let's up that spread a little bit and see how it's looking. So I think that honestly looks pretty good there. So let's see, maybe it's the type that we've got there. Yeah, so it was the blend mode that we had really wasn't working for the image. And there are a bunch of different ones that you can actually use. So there's like overlay and stuff like that. So we're gonna go with a normal one. And then what we're going to do after we've got the stuff set is we're gonna pull the opacity back just a little bit so it doesn't glow as harsh. Actually, I really don't like the yellow there. So we're gonna click on yellow and we're going to adjust this to something else that we think looks good. So just kind of move this around a little bit. Once again, this isn't anything super fancy. We're just kind of messing around. So let's, let's actually go with this blue that's here and click OK. And then we're gonna up the opacity of it a little bit. So we want it to kind of stand out a little bit. So you can see up here, it doesn't really have an effect because that's almost the same color, but down here it kind of stands out and just gives a little bit of contrast. And we'll click okay. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and stop there. There are definitely tons of other things you could do. Maybe you change the colors up a little bit. You kind of play around with the different images and text and stuff like that. Definitely tons of other things you could do possibly if you wanted to. But we're at the point where we want to go ahead and save this or export it whichever you prefer. So let me go ahead and tell you the difference between saving as a PSD and exporting. So if you save as a PSD, this saves as a Photoshop document. This means you can go back and open it up in Photoshop or you can actually go back and open it up here. This is really good if you plan on using this as a template or if you mess something up and you're like, oh, I have made a typo or something in here. You could go back a month from now and you can go up and update this, which is really neat. Um, I typically actually create a PSD backup of everything I do, so I would save this as a PSD. What this is going to do is, once again, just save it as a Photoshop document, which means you still have all these layers to edit at some point, which is really good. So if you want to, save that first, but whenever you are done, we need to go ahead and save it in a format to upload to YouTube because YouTube doesn't allow you just to upload a Photoshop document. We need an image that we can upload to YouTube. So to create that image, we need to export as and you could use JPEG or JPG, but I actually recommend using PNG. I feel like the colors look a little bit better on the web. So go ahead and click PNG. And then we get an option of how high quality we want and a few other things that we can kind of adjust there. So if you wanted the file size to be smaller, you could actually tone this quality down, which is a really neat feature. But for the sake of this video, we're just going to put the quality at 100 and then click save. The next thing it should do is prompt you and ask you where you want to save it. So we're just going to name this new project and we're going to save it to our downloads folder and click save. So after you've saved your image, you can go to your downloads folder wherever you saved it and open it up. And wow, that is actually really good considering we did not spend a penny and we did this in a browser without even downloading a program to our computer. So that's going to be all for this video. If you guys enjoyed, go ahead and kill that like button. And if you're not subscribed, why aren't you? Get subscribed now for more videos just like this one. And turn on notifications if you are subbed and you're like, man, I keep liking these videos and you want to know whenever the next one comes out. So definitely get involved that way. If you guys want to support the channel financially, check out our Patreon in the description down below. And also, if you guys want to go ahead and join our community Discord, that'll be linked down there as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. This has been Chad from How To Tech, helping you take your tech to the next level. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Thank you.